Hi everyone, it is me, Matt Montada, and today's review is going to be for Sicario, Day of the Soldado. But uh, anyways, let's begin. Now, before I get started, you're probably wondering what my thoughts are excuse me, my thoughts are on the first Sicario film. Well, I really liked it. Sure, it's probably the weakest of Denis Villeneuve's films that I've seen so far, but overall, I think it's a solid film from him. So, as you would imagine, I was still excited for this film, but at the same time, seeing how Denis Villeneuve didn't come back to direct this one, I was a bit skeptical, especially since I have no idea who this director is. The director of this one is named Stefano Salima? I think that's how you say his name. And I have no idea what he's made, honestly. I mean, I've heard that he's done a bit of uh, Spanish television directing, but aside from that, I haven't really had that much information on him in terms of actual filmmaking. So, I went in with some caution, but also some optimism seeing how Benicio Del Toro and Josh Brolin were my favorite parts of the first one. I know, I'm sorry Emily Blunt, but your absence was kinda needed for this. So, overall, I think this is a pretty solid sequel. Do I think it's better than the first one? It depends on how you feel. Because I know there's a lot of people who adore the first one, and that's cool. But for me, this one did a little bit more for me than what the first one had to offer. And here's why. Well, first of all, I should point out that the performances are super good in this film. You've got Benicio Del Toro and Josh Brolin, who give two great performances. It's even up to a point where I can't even choose which one is better, because both of them have like this very equal amount of talent in their performances that you can't really decide which performance you feel should get more recognition when talking about this film. Though if you were to make me choose, I'd probably have to lean towards Benicio Del Toro because not only was he great in this film, but he also had a very fair share of of powerful moments which we'll get into in a second and then you have Josh Brolin who gives a very charismatic performance so then you have the little girl from Transformers The Last Night and I gotta say this was definitely a good piece of work to to make her add to her resume because she gave a fantastic performance in this movie. Really all of the performances in this movie are great. 
As for how the film is directed, it's directed pretty well. The cinematography and the editing mesh together pretty well. And the directing in itself is pretty good. It has a very gritty feel to it. And, a, and whenever the intense moments hit, they really hit. Especially in terms of the action scenes, which are pretty well done. And then as for the cinematography, another thing I want to add to it is that... Is that it's pretty good. And while, and while it can't really live up to the standards that of, uh, of Roger Deakins' work in the first one, I think this is a pretty solid piece of cinematography work. Especially since this is the guy who did the cinematography for The Martian, I think? I might have to look it up later. But yeah, great work nonetheless. What else? What else? I did say before that the action was pretty good. And... And it... And it has this very good feeling of suspense to it. Well, at least in the first two-thirds of the film. The first two-thirds are just unbefrickin' leavable. In terms of the action scenes and the suspense and the pacing, which was fine for the most part. But then when you reach the last third of the film, that's where I feel like, I mean, it doesn't really, it doesn't like completely take it down or anything or like bogs it down, but it's kind of noticeable and it starts to kind of run out of steam because of that. But also what I liked about this film is the fact that they managed to, to have very quiet scenes as well. One of my favorite scenes of, of the entire year so far, if you've, if you've seen this film, is when Benicio Del Toro and the little girl come across the, the deaf guy for the first time. The pacing during that scene and the atmosphere and the music and the acting, it's really, really well done. And there's quite a few moments like that in this film, especially when it's needed to develop its characters. And it's quite an example of of a way to present very humanistic scenes in a film about cartels and and all kinds of other stuff that I didn't really know much about going into this film. Now, as for negatives, There are a couple. Like I said before, the pacing does start to get a little janky around the, I want to say the last third of the film. And the ending as well. If you've seen this film, you know that there's a subplot in this film revolving revolving around a teenage boy, which is all I'm gonna say, honestly. And and then when you reach that ending, it kind of feels more like this film was trying to set up a franchise rather than do its own thing, which was kind of disappointing for me. 
because the reason why something like Blade Runner 2049 was so good is because it still tried to be a sequel, but it still manages to, to be its own thing and doesn't try to set up a universe where you can see about 10 to 20 other films in this, in this world. But then in this film, it just kind of, kind of feels like, hey, let's, let's shoehorn this ending so that we can have all these other films that we're gonna plan for the future. I don't know, it just felt kind of forced and not needed. But overall, if you're looking for a movie about cartels and whatnot, this is definitely the film for you. And if you like the first one, it kind of depends on how you feel in order to like it. So, overall, I would give Sicario Day of the Soldado a B plus because those negatives that I said kind of dragged it down for me. But overall, I think it's a solid sequel. It just would have been so better if they didn't have that ending. But anyways, yeah, that is all I have for you today. Hope you go see this film as soon as possible. And hopefully you get to see it before Ant-Man and the Wasp comes out because that's going to be great. I can't wait to review Ant-Man and the Wasp for you guys next week. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.